Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be with you this morning. Unfortunately, it's for a sad reason. Uh, our, dean, uh, our dean's father died unexpectedly this week, so he had to leave in a hurry to go to New Zealand, where the family is there. And uh, so um, we're putting together the service this morning uh, with a lot of help. Unfortunately, uh, some of our other clergy are not here as well, but um, everybody knows what's going on, so we'll be fine. Um, and uh, we ask still, we ask you to wear a mask uh, unless you're speaking at the microphone. Uh, and uh, we know that there are changes coming. And I'll talk about that at, toward the end of the service uh, in the announcement time.
Welcome to everyone here with us in person, and welcome to those who are joining us from home. As I mentioned earlier, the Dean is away, but we keep him and all his family, both here and in New Zealand, in our thoughts and prayers. We'll just wait while we gather our thoughts. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God, everything Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we pray. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. <laughs> uh, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. He got up and ate and drank 
Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord for the Lord's about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian 
For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer a slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him, He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged Jesus might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of Christ.
I speak to you with faith in the love of God, in the way of Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the 1960s, there was a very popular song entitled, The Sound of Silence. It was written and performed by the singing duo of Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel. Like many singers in the 1960s, Simon and Garfunkel often had a social message in their songs. They were protest songs protesting war, poverty, injustice, and indifference to the economic and social reality of the majority of people. Sometimes protest songs had a religious undertone. The last verse of this song has some striking similarities to our Old Testament scripture passage today. And I quote, and the people bowed and prayed to the neon god they made. And the sign flashed out its warning in the words that it was forming. And the sign said, the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tenement halls and whispered in the sounds of silence. The neon god made by the people is the god of flashing lights, trying to get the attention of those who pass by. The people take no notice of its warning. The words of the prophets are written all around them on subway walls and tenement halls of the poor and the destitute. The words of the prophets are whispered in the sounds of silence but no one is listening. In our biblical story about the prophet Elijah, no one wants to listen to him or be associated with him because he has angered Queen, Queen Jezebel, who is determined to kill him. Elijah is running away into the wilderness, away from the troubles of the people and the corruption of the society around him. Twice God asks him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah's response is defensive and a little self-righteous. He has worked very hard to serve God and to turn the Israelite people away from their wicked ways. But he has been left to the mercy of those who would kill him. God does not abandon him. Surprisingly, God decides to come closer to Elijah and speak directly to him. The natural world reacts dramatically to the approach of God with a devastating windstorm, an earthquake, and a searing fire. But God is not in these frightening events. God's voice is heard in the sound of sheer silence. The natural world around Elijah becomes still and silent. Only then can Elijah hear God's voice. Elijah, like many people then and now, expects the voice of God to, be, to boom out from terrifying eruptions of the earth. <clears throat> but it was in the calm after the storm that God could be heard. In our excerpt from the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of the deranged man possessed by demons who has been terrorizing the people. Sadly, the people have reacted by using brute force to control him and chain him like an animal. As the scene is described in the text, there is a great deal of commotion and loud cries from the man and from the fearful people. However, Jesus stands in their midst quietly and unafraid. 
excuse me. He speaks with authority to the demons who leave the man. They run into the swine, which then stampede to their death in the ravine. It is an amazing story, full of noise and drama. But there is a stillness and calm in the midst of all the panic. That stillness and calm surrounds Jesus, who speaks firmly but quietly to the demonic forces. The people are so amazed by the power of Jesus that they become frightened and ask Jesus to leave their village. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have a problem, I can tell. <laughs> the healed man asks Jesus if he can go with him, but Jesus gently tells the man to go and tell others how much God has done for him. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> the quiet voices of God and of God's Son have a great deal of competition in our noisy world. <coughs> it is over 50 years since Simon and Garfunkel's song was first heard. The communication technology has exploded into ways and means we could not have imagined in the 1960s. The internet and social media give us a great deal of information, but what do we choose to hear? In another verse of the song, we are asked that, that question. People talking without speaking, people hearing without listening, People writing songs that voices never share. <coughs> and no one dared disturb the sound of silence. Today in our world, people must decide what they can trust to hear and what they can trust to believe. In his despair, Elijah turned to God and God came to him in quietness. But God would not let Elijah hide from the world. God sent him to teach God's will and to work for peace among the people. God sent Jesus into the world to teach a new covenant between God and the people, a covenant of justice and compassion. God's voice of comfort, courage, and guidance may come to us in unexpected ways, often when we are not listening. Silence in our world today is eerie, mysterious, even a little unnerving, very appropriate for the presence of God. Stillness and silence give us time to ponder, to marvel at God's creation, to breathe calmly, and to listen. Will we pay attention? God is always with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Would you stand, please? Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, of one being with the Father, to him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our time of prayer, please take the posture that you most prefer standing, sitting or kneeling. Our response will be, loving God, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for calling us together here today. We ask that you would bless our church, your church in the world. And specifically, we pray today for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. We pray for the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, for healing and reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Rupert's Land. And in our own diocese, we pray for our Bishop, Susan Bell, and the staff here at Cathedral Place. And of our own community, we pray for Diane Dent, Andrew Deerhurst, Gwen Peer, and Georgie Docker. As we observe the National Indigenous Day of Prayer this week and the continued celebration of pride, we ask that you strengthen our commitment and resolve to work and pray for reconciliation with all our siblings to build your church so that we all know we are one in you. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for our community, for those places where we know there is war and unrest, almost more than our minds and hearts can take in. We pray for our planet home. Help us to care for it so that the next generations will know its beauty and its bounty. And may we pray and have the strength to connect with our leaders 
to ask them to build a just society as we work to build a just society where all have safe shelter, enough food and clothing. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray, loving God, for the sick, the dying, those in distress, and those in our community who have died, especially Brian Shoesmith, a priest and friend in our community. We ask for those, we pray also for those in our community who have asked to be remembered. Susan, Eric, Susan, Linda, Kathy, Gary, Barb, Sally and Willow, Cecil, Selena, Heather, Norm, Karina, Bishop Michael, Sharon, Joe and Lori, Alexis and Brian, Veronica, Brian, Diana, Michael, Mildred, Paul, Jim, Rhonda, Shirley, Carol, and Laura. And let us pray for those who are known to us or to you alone, loving God. Loving God, hear our prayer. We thank you that you have called us to come to give thanks as well. We give thanks for those loving fathers in our communities, those who have cared for their own children and for all the children of our villages. We give thanks for silence, the silence in which we hear your voice. And from that, we give thanks for our lives, your gift to us, and your calling to each of us to serve you and each other as co-creators in Christ. Loving God, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit the life giver, the peace of the triune God be always with you. I invite you to make a sign of peace with your people around you.
eternal God, you have made your Savior, Jesus Christ, the head of all creation. Receive all we offer you this day and renew us in his risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God. For you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread, and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. 
and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Almighty God, guide and protect your people who share in this sacred mystery. And keep us always in your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated again. There are several announcements, uh, but I also urge you to look at the green sheet of our chronicle. As I mentioned earlier, there are changes coming to our uh, daily Eucharist. The bishop this week announced that soon, for us, perhaps next Sunday, Masks will be a personal preference, a personal choice. And uh, that's going to make a great deal of difference to us in, uh, in our worship time, but also for those who may come to visit us. Uh, it, it has been the practice that they can come and feel quite secure and safe because everyone is masked. Next week, perhaps, that will not be the case. Um, also, next week, at the 10.30 service, at this service, we hope to be, and I can say that, hope to be, outside. So that will help with this transition to not having to wear masks. Next week will be two services, an 8.30 service as usual, in the cathedral, and then hopefully the 10.30 service outside. The following week, on July the 3rd, we go to our summer schedule, which is one service on Sunday only at 9.30. Um, and that will usually be in the cathedral, um, and we will see how things go for there. Um, Arch, uh, Deacon Rob and Rob Miller, as you have seen, are away, so there will be no afternoon discussion time today. There has been an article in The Spectator in recent days that it, it was an article about the history of this area, about the history of Hamilton, and about the importance of graveyards in Hamilton. In the article, at the beginning and at the end, it said that the cathedral will be tearing up our parking lot for up creating a condominium. Um, that was a project at one time, but we decided that that would not go forward the, uh, we are still not sure if there are any graves in, the, in our parking lot area. Uh, however, the, the graveyard many, many, many years ago was moved to the Hamilton Cemetery, those graves, we hope. But it has been decided many, a long time ago. Unfortunately, this article raised the issue again, and there is some question, but we have no plans to create a condominium on our parking lot. Next Sunday, when we have the service, there may be more changes than just masks. The bishop has given permission, as of this past Thursday, to re reintroduce the common cup. 
This needs to be planned ahead so that everyone feels safe in this regard. The Common Cup is a safe way of communicating, but not everybody feels that way. So next Sunday, we will decide that and decide, again, as I say, we will be outside. One of our dear priests has died and was mentioned earlier. Brian Shoesmith died this past week. His funeral will be here on Thursday at noon, and there will be a visitation before, approximately one hour before. Again, I mentioned to you that the dean is away, and he will be back this Thursday, hopefully. New Zealand is a long ways away, <laughs> and um, uh, and we will be in, he, will, he and his family will be in our prayers until then. Thank you. If I may interrupt. Hmm? If I may interrupt. There uh, some, were some studies some years ago concerning the common cup and the hygiene of doing that. It was discovered that the common cup has been used with alcoholic wine and with the, because of the silver oxide, the common cup is safe. However, and uh, but, uh, according to one's own um, uh, conscience that way, of course. One thing that was uh, discovered is that the practice of intinction, of dipping the host into the wine, is nowhere near as sanitary as some people thought. And we were requested some years ago, please to not do it. So I, I, I bring that point up for those who feel unsafe to drink from the common cup, and that's perfectly acceptable. But please, for those who do, do not think that intention is safer, because it is not. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that was I think, something important we need to hear. Thank you. And please, for the blessing. May the God of peace embrace you. May the Christ of love walk with you. May the spirit of hope lift your hearts. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity be with you this day, now and always. Amen. Amen.
Go forth into the world with faith in the power of God's love. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 